What's up guys, Alex here, author of the book Master the Day. Today I want to talk to you about how to overcome ADD. So this is actually something I get fairly often and it's pretty interesting to me because one, I've never had ADD in my life. So it's kind of interesting because other people, the way they interpret what ADD is or maybe how they've been told at school or at home, stop being so ADD. It's really interesting to see what people think is ADD as well as the suggestions people give to overcome it. So I think the first thing is that you need to understand that people assume there's something wrong with you, right? So they always assume there's something wrong with you if you have ADD or you maybe assume there's something wrong with you. Because think about it in school. It's so frowned upon to have ADD, right? The teachers, your parents, they all are telling you ADD is bad. ADD means you won't succeed. ADD means you can't focus in class. ADD means you're not going to get crap done because you can't focus long enough. I would personally... Think of it as more of a gift rather than a curse. Now that seems kind of hard, right? Because how are you going to be able to achieve anything if you can't stick with it? But let me give you some other thoughts on ADD here for a sec. For me, someone who doesn't have ADD at all, has no problems focusing, is really good focusing, and I was in school too, it really depends on the subject. So don't be like you're taking boring school classes and you can't focus, you assume you have ADD, or the teacher tells you you have ADD. That's kind of BS because if you compare two different subjects, like if we compare art, like if you brought me to an art gallery, you know like when you're a kid and you go to church and you don't want to go to church, your knees are all weak and you get all tired easily and you get bored and you get like, you're yawning, you're looking around, you're just like, this sucks, I don't want to be here. Of course you have ADD because you're uninterested, you're disinterested in where you are. I find that for me, if I go to museums, like I've been to some of the best museums in the world. I'm shooting this video from Lisbon, Portugal. I've been in the best museums in Italy, in France, in Spain, in New York City, I mean everywhere. And I'm not that interested. I'm so embarrassed to say that. I've seen Picasso's, the most beautiful works of art in the world, and I get bored easily. I'm just not into the arts. I'm not into plays, and I admire the skill, but I'm not into it. So I just get bored easily. Like for me to sit in a line for three hours at the Uffizi to see one of the best museums in the world, some of the best artists in history, it's kind of boring to me. So I get ADD, right? But then a different kind of art, martial arts, if a TV show comes on or there's a movie on or a documentary or a book, even a book this thick, I'll read it because that's cool to me. That's really, really cool to me. So it's a matter of personal interest as well. It really heavily depends on the subject about is it something you actually like or is it something you don't like? And in school, a lot of the crap we don't like. So of course we're going to have ADD about it. Don't discount the fact that you may just not be interested in your day-to-day schedule, whether it is work or whether it is school we're talking about. If, you know, whether it's a fitness goal even, it could be ADD because guess what? You don't like running. Well, me neither. That's why I don't ever run. So think about this first as you go through this. The second thing is, think of ADD as a gift. Well, how could it, you know, Alex, how is ADD a gift if I can't concentrate? My mom and my dad have been punching it in my head and my teachers that ADD is not a gift. Well, think about Richard Branson for a sec. So Richard Branson was, maybe is now, one of the only repeated billionaires of multiple companies. I think he's up to eight or something. And guess what? He has severe ADD and severe dyslexia. So how did he go on to build all of these amazing companies and do all this cool stuff? First of all, there's this famous story where when he was in school, his headmaster or the principal, something like that, said, you're either going to end up in prison or you're going to end up a millionaire. Well, he ended up a billionaire. But the point with Richard Branson is that he understood that his ADD could be a gift. He understood that, guess what? he could go on to found multiple companies. And the actual thrill of being an entrepreneur is really, really good for people with ADD because guess what? Every single day, you're learning something new. Every single day, there's something new to learn, whether it's how to create some kind of content, whether it's how to get sales, how to get sponsors, like how do you cold call people? How do I create a new product? How do I create a beautiful product? How do I market the product? As an entrepreneur, there's always so much to learn. So I would say, that if you have ADD or a short attention span, entrepreneurship is something you should consider because it really does attract an abnormal amount of people that that say or were told as kids that they have ADD. Entrepreneurship really does attract more people with ADD. And for me, many of the jobs that I've had in my 20s, I quit almost every job I had or was fired within six months. 
The first reason was because I got so bored with the fact that, hey, after like three months of a job, 100 days, most jobs, you already know 90% of the stuff, right? There isn't a very clear-cut ladder of learning. Like first six months, first year, first two years, there usually is not a very clear-cut ladder of learning. So it's pretty natural to get bored. And as a result, my performance would fail, it would suck, and I'd get fired, or I would quit, or I would do stu- something stupid, basically because I wanted to get fired. So just like Branson, your ADD can become your gift, and guess what? Maybe you're born to be an entrepreneur. I don't know what to tell you. Like You could just be born to be an entrepreneur, and working for someone else may not be your thing. The other thing is that there's obviously physical things as well. Like Let's not deny the fact that I don't believe ADD exists. And in fact, there's some pretty interesting research challenging the chemical theory, chemical imbalance theory of even depression. But going back to the ADD thing, the first thing is if you're not eating right, that would be the first thing. We talk about weight loss. We talk about wellness here all the time. Some of your key habits should be, number one, work on the proper diet that stabilizes your blood sugar. <clears throat> now, with stabilizing your blood sugar, the most important things that I would recommend are first and foremost to have higher protein, higher veggies, and the right kinds of carbs. Higher protein is a, almost a board, across the board rule I recommend. 20 to 30 grams, I go for chicken or fish. More veggies, I try to get as many veggies as possible in each meal. Getting a lot of veggies has not been a habit that was easy for me when I was younger. It's also sometimes not easy when you travel because lots of cultures eat staple carbs like rice and breads. I'm in Portugal here now and I was in Spain for a month writing my next book. And guess what? Every damn meal is bread or fried potatoes. I mean, it's ridiculous. These are not foods I eat on a daily basis. What I aim for is higher protein. Breakfast is typically eggs. Lunch is typically like a chicken or a fish with salad and some rice. The evenings, when I talked about having the right kind of carbs, it means having brown rice or whole grains instead of white wheat bread or instead of white rice. I know in Asia that's difficult, just do your best, right? First thing is aim for the more stable blood sugar. Second thing is use that energy to exercise, right? If you're having like crazy energy, then why not use it and go out for a walk? One of the ways that I get people to do walks or to go for runs or to exercise when they don't really want to is I have them listen to podcasts. Here in Portugal and when I was in Spain, one of the things I found myself doing quite a lot was buying audiobooks and going for these three-hour walks. I would just go out and walk for a while. I'm on a one-month sabbatical for writing and I'm not going to the gym at all, which bothers me. <laughs> so the way I counteract that is I listen to an audiobook and then I go for a nice three-hour walk and I explore the city. I find a nice spot to have dinner and sit down with some wine. And in general, I use this as a way to essentially distract my mind. And that's how I get myself to go to a walk, go for a walk. So if you can't get yourself to exercise and you have all this energy, which you want to use to your advantage, if it's not martial arts you like or yoga or gardening or biking, whatever it is, try putting in a podcast, try putting in an audiobook, try listening to something on YouTube and just go for a walk or go for a run or go to the gym for an hour. Just by listening, you're not going to feel like you're really doing anything. And then the last thing would be to channel this ADD into a project. For me, one of the ways that I staved off the boredom of having a job that was so repetitive in all the other aspects of my life was that I was always working on a side project. So if you have ADD and it's at work, at school, wherever it is in your life, what if you just channeled a little bit of that into a project that you really like? So that project could be creating a video game. It could be creating some kind of art, writing a book, painting, drawing, creating music? What if you just channeled like that ADD into an hour a day project on the side that could become something that you don't know what it could become? It could become something great. It could become your new business. It could become a side career. Maybe you won't have to go to college because you've produced something that now it feeds you. Or maybe it's just something that's really, really cool and maybe it's something that helps the world or changes the world. Channel it and always think of ADD as a strength. So as a recap here of the key things, First thing is, always think of ADD as a strength. If that's just the way you are, view it as just the way you are. Don't view it as an illness, some just ridiculous disadvantage you have. Use it to your advantage. Second thing is, maybe it's actually because you have a bad diet and you're just not that healthy. This, the, everything plays a role. The minds and the body are not separate, but they are one. So what I mean by that is, maybe if you find yourself having a hard time concentrating, 
do the blood sugar stabilization I recommended. Go for those podcast or audiobook walks. Channel that energy into a little bit being healthier. Because also when you remove dyes, when you remove sugar, when you remove these things from your diet, also things like coffee and Red Bull, things that are natural stimulants may exacerbate that for you or it may chill you out. I've heard of the, the, you know, the contrary as well. Dial in your diet and exercise. When you're healthier, almost anything that's negative like towards the extremes, it will help normalize it. And then last, channel the energy into a side project. Like really try to do something with the energy because you have it there. That's a gift where there are millions of people that don't have enough energy, all right? So before you go, I want you to leave a comment right there below. Let me know what you're going to do to channel that ADD into something greater and improve your life because I want to hear from you right there below. Hey guys, it's Alex. Did you like this video? If so, there are three ways you can really stay in touch with me. The first thing is obviously to click the subscribe button right there. Every single day I'm releasing a brand new tiny habit video to help you lose weight, feel awesome, and live better. Second thing is you can check out my book Master of the Day. Brand new, just came out, it's been topping the Amazon bestseller list, and it's been getting great feedback. It's all about the tiny success habits to help you lose your next 20 or 30 pounds and get to kind of that next level, both in your health, but also in your life. And the third thing is, come visit me over on my website, modernhealthmonk.com. Punch in your email there and I'll give you a free guide on the exact five daily habits to help you lose your next 20 or 30 pounds. So go do those three things now and I look forward to catching you in the next video.